Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to Quiz Time Ramadan Special. This unique show brings together contestants in the studio and you, our audience, in a live program via the official MTA app, no matter where you are in the world. I'm your host for today's live show and we're thrilled to kick off the third episode of this special Ramadan program and we enter the, as we enter the last 10 days of this blessed month. To join the quiz, simply download the MTAI app on your Android or iOS device from Google Play or the App Store. Alternatively, use your phone's camera to scan the QR code on the screen and tap the link to download the app. Once logged in, head to the events section and click on Quiz Time to watch the show live and interact with us. Let's explore what's in store for today's show. Quiz Time consists of three rounds. Round one. Get ready for a buzzer round featuring fundamental Islamic questions. Round two. Round two will challenge your knowledge of the book Noah's Ark, written by the promised Messiah alayhi salam. Round three. And in round three, the Khalifa's voice will delve into insights from Friday sermons delivered by our beloved Imam, Hazrat Khalifa al the V. May Allah be his helper. For mobile users, your device will display the current question with multiple choice answers. Quickly select your answer. You'll be notified on your app if it is correct once the answer is revealed in the studio. Remember, speed is crucial for a higher score. Recapping last week's episode, Fawad Noonan from the UK's Middlesex region won in studio and our international winner was Dania Richardson, who will receive a special copy of the Holy Quran. Congratulations, Dania. This show offers global participation with today's winner also receiving a special copy of the Holy Quran. So get ready to test your knowledge and compete. Let's meet our studio for today's contestants. Uh, our first contestant is Mohammed Shoeb. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. First time on MTA like this? Uh, second time. Second time, mashallah. So you should be a pro, hoping that you score very well. <laughs> and uh, on your left hand side, we have uh, Osama Omar Saab. Welcome to this side of MTA, because I know you're normally in editing. Yes. That's How does right. it feel to be in front of the cameras? Um, slightly nervous, but uh, looking forward to the show. Okay, well done. So welcome both uh, Osama and Ali to quiz time. So let's get started with a warm-up question to make sure everyone's uh, working as expected. Contestants in the studio, get ready, and viewers at home also get ready, and uh, please load up your apps and get ready to participate. The warm-up question for today is, what does the word Islam tra translate into English? Is it A, peace, B, harmony, C, mercy, or D, righteousness? Four possible answers. And uh, let's have a look and see how the contestants in the studios have selected. Uh, what have you selected? A, peace. A, peace. Yep, same, A. Okay, we have peace here again. So peace is prevailing here in the studio. Let's how, see how uh, uh, we have fared in terms of the correct answer is peace. Well done. So both of you have got that correct. And at home, let's see how you have uh, uh, managed to get that correct or not. It's 96% of you have managed to get that correct. So well done. Good warm up. It seems like you're all ready at home. And it's now time to see how people are going to vote on the next question, which is a poll. So the app also allows us to take a poll from your home. We would like to find out if you are enjoying the show. On your apps, vote on the poll now. The vote says, uh, are you enjoying quiz time so far? Uh, A is loving it, can't get enough. <laughs> B is pretty good. C, not sure yet. And D, it's not my quite, uh, quite to my liking. Um, how have you? Well, definitely A. You're loving it? Yep. You are at the moment, as you are not competing. I know. But <laughs> Osama? Yeah, I went for the same option. OK. And let's have a look and see how we have also voted at home. 66% of you have uh, said you're loving it. And I hope you're being polite uh, and honest as well at the same time. Uh, B, 
it's pretty good. See, 5% uh, of you not quite sure, and thankfully, uh, not many of you, 0%, uh, have said it's not quite to my liking, and if it was, I would say, uh, turn this off and go and watch something else. But alhamdulillah, everything's functioning smoothly. We're set to commence the quiz. Viewers, as we embark on this live broadcast, it's important to acknowledge the global reach of the MTA app, which such extensive coverage, occasional technical issues may arise. Rest assured, our dedicated technical team is working diligently behind the scenes to address any hiccups. We remain optimistic that this show will progress smoothly as scheduled, inshallah. Should you encounter any app-related difficulties, feel free to reach out to our technical team via WhatsApp, and the number is being shown on your screens as we speak. Uh, as an additional feature, we will be showcasting your messages on screen, so be sure to share your comments and thoughts via our social media handles throughout the show. Now, for those uh, turn, tuning in online, for optimal viewing with minimal delay, we recommend accessing the show through the events section on, on the MTA app. For those wanting minimal delay while watching on your TV screens, we recommend that you cast your device using Google Chromecast or Apple AirPlay, ensuring the entire family can join in the excitement together. With all preparations complete, let's dive straight into our first round, Ramadan Rush. Welcome to, welcome to round one, where speed and memory reign supreme. We're delving into the Wakfinor syllabus parts two and three with multiple choice questions. Here's the drill. Once the question is posed, studio contestants get ready to buzz in, and first one to do so will have 10 seconds to lock in your answer. If you're swift and correct, the points are yours. And for viewers at home, you've got also got the same 10 seconds window to select your answers after the buzzer sounds. Each correct answer earns you a point. Let's kick off with question one. At what age did the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam receive his first revelation? Was it A, 45 years old, B, 50 years old, C, 35 years old, or D, 40 years old? We have a buzz in uh, in the studio. Uh, Osama Sab, you've actually uh, buzzed in. You've got a few more seconds to uh, look and recheck your answer, and the time is about to finish now. What is your answer? Uh, D, 40 years old. Uh, 40 years old is your answer. Let's have a see as to whether this is correct or not. Well done, mashallah, you've got that correct. So uh, that point is yours. Let's have a look and see how everyone's done at home. Um, we have 85%, the vast majority, who have also voted in the same way, which is very good, very uh, positive. And uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, received his first revelation when he was 40 years old. And it was in this very blessed month of Ramadan in which this pivotal incident occurred in the cave of Hira when Allah Ta'ala spoke to him and revealed, Ikra bi ismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Let's move on to question two. What is the English translation of the hadith? Is it A, success lies in intentions? B, deeds are judged by intentions? C, deeds are judged by others? And D, good deeds bring success? We have a buzz in again, this time again by Osama Sab. What is your answer? We'll give you a few more seconds if you want to rethink. But OK, a few more seconds at home as well. So what's your answer? Uh, I've gone with uh, option B. Deeds are judged by intentions. Deeds are judged by intentions is your answer. Let's have a look and see if you are correct. Uh, and you are, mashallah. And at home. Again, well done everyone at home. 87% uh, have also voted for deeds are judged by intentions. Um, this is the first uh, hadith in um, uh, m the most authentic book, uh, Sahih Bukhari. Uh, during which uh, Islamic month did the event of the Miraj take place? Was it A, Ramadan? Was it B, Shawwal? Was it C, Rajab? Or D, Muharram? Okay. We have uh, a close call there. I think it was uh, uh, Osama. I'm not very sure. Um, unless it was a technical hitch, I'm not really sure. Um, let's have a look and see. Osama, uh, we'll give it to you anyway. And uh, let's have a look and see. Although you <laughs> might not be here. Okay. This is not rigged, I can tell you. This is a technical for if it's happened. Go ahead. Go I've ahead. gone with uh, option C, Rajab. OK, Rajab is your answer. And uh, let's have a look and see if that is correct. Uh, yes, it is. Rajab is the correct answer. Let's uh, go over to our resident expert, Abdul Halim, for some more interesting information on this very fact. 
majority of the Muslims around the world believe that Miraj was a physical journey rather than a spiritual journey. We, as Ahmadi Muslims, believe it was a spiritual journey. And the Holy Quran and Ahadith prove us right. In the Holy Quran, where it's mentioning regarding Miraj, God Almighty mentions, Ma kazabal fuwadu ma ra'a, that what the heart saw was not a lie. Now, if it was a physical journey, then surely God Almighty should have mentioned eyes, which are physical. But he mentioned the heart, which proves it was a heartfelt vision and a spiritual journey. Moreover, in a narration in Bukhari, where it's mentioning regarding Miraj, in the end of the hadith, it says, then he woke up and he was in the sacred mosque, which clearly indicates that at the time of the Miraj, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was asleep. So just to make it uh, very clear to all of you watching at home that there is no rigging taking place, we uh, have tested the buzzers and unfortunately, Shweb Ali, you're just a bit slow on pressing it. Okay, so uh, for all of you joining us now, uh, if you're eager to participate in the live show, remember the only way to do so is through the official MTA app. If you haven't already done so, take a moment to download the app and join us by heading over to Quiz Time. Now let's move on to question four. Question four is, in which year was the scheme of Tehrik e Jadid initiated? Was it A, 1908, B, 1934, C, 19... Oh, now we have a buzz in even before the last option was revealed to us. Feeling very confident, Shweb Ali Sahib, and let's have a look and see. You have a few more seconds to change your mind. What's your answer? B, 1934. 1934 is his answer. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. And the correct answer is, in fact, well done, 1934 is uh, the correct answer. Option D would have been 1914, but 70% of you at home also got that right, which is very good. Um, and the Tehrik al-Jadid scheme, in fact, was established in 1934 by Hazrat Muslim Maud to spread the a message of Islam Ahmadiyyat after a wave of opposition against the Jamaat, particularly from the Ahrar group. Let's go to the next question. How many authentic books of Hadith are there? Uh, there are four possibilities. You have A as five, B as six. Okay, we have a buzz in and uh, looks like you're taking revenge now. Um, Shuaib Ali Sab, what is your uh, answer? Uh, B6. Okay, we'll give you a few more seconds. Just uh, Okay, that's fine. What is the answer? B6. B6. Okay, so uh, the answer that you have given is six. The correct answer is also, in fact, six. The other options would have been uh, five, three, or two. And mashallah, 74% of you also at home managed to get the right answer. And um, that is six books of Hadith. Uh, they are also referred to as the Siha Sitta. Uh, let's go to the next question. Who accompanied the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam on his visit to Taif? Was it A, Hazrat Hamza, Raziyallah Ta'ala Anhu? Was it Hazrat Abu Bakr, Raziyallah Ta'ala Anhu? Was it Hazrat Bilal, Raziyallah Ta'ala Anhu? Or was it Hazrat Zaid, Raziyallah Ta'ala Anhu? We have a buzz in um, from Shuaib Ali in the studio. You have a few more seconds. If you want to change your answer, you can do so, but the time is now up. What's your selected answer? Hazrat Zaid Raziyallah Ta'ala Anhu is your answer. The correct answer is in fact uh, Hazrat Zaid. Well done, very good. The other options of, of people had gone for are uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr, which 30% of you had gone for, uh, but most of you have actually gone for Hazrat Zaid Raziyallah Ta'ala Anhu. Uh, let's go to find out a little bit more information on this very fact from, our, from one of our resident experts, uh, Talat Siyan. The Holy Prophet وسلم, decided to spread the message of Islam to the people of Taif, a town which was situated just outside of Mecca. When the Holy Prophet وسلم, got to Taif, he preached his message and the leaders rejected his message and they made the youth of the town pelt stones at the Holy Prophet وسلم, and drive him out of the town. The Holy Prophet was injured so much so that blood was dripping down to his sandals and his feet were getting stuck onto the sandal. At this moment, he took refuge to the side and an angel came and he said to the Holy Prophet that if you wish, Allah has said that he can destroy this town for the way they have treated you. 
Now look at the reply of the Holy Prophet وسلم, out of his mercy and compassion. He said, no, maybe someone from among their progeny would accept Islam and believe in the one true God. So guys, how are you feeling now? Good. Confident, feeling a bit more confident, confident yep. happy. Yep. And uh, I understand you're both related to each other. So how, what's the tension going to be like in the household? Huh? I understand his mum's your puppy or something. That's right. Yeah, okay, so, so the who's the puppy going to be going for? That's, is it going to be her son or is it going to be her son-in-law? <laughs> what do you think? I hope she's going to go with me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching, uh, let's uh, hope and pray that uh, we're uh, supporting uh, both in, the, in an adequate way. And uh, we hope and pray that everyone who's watching and uh, playing uh, enjoy this uh, show at the same time. Let's move on to the next question, question seven. Uh, let's have a look and see what the question is. Which family did the Holy Prophet وسلم, belong to? Was it A, Banu Umayyah? Was it B, Banu Hashim? C, Banu a Muqsam, or was it Banu Abd shams We have Osama who has uh, buzzed in and you have selected which answer. You've got a few more seconds left to change your mind if you wish, if I wish and your answer is now locked. Which uh, answer have you gone for? Um, I've gone for the option B, Banu Hashim. And Banu Hashim is your selected choice. Let's have a look and see if that is correct. Well done, you've gone for the correct answer. And 84% of you at home also have actually voted for Banu Hashim. Uh, very few of you have actually gone for Banu Umayya or Banu Maqsim. The Holy Prophet وسلم, actually did belong to the tribe of Quraysh and the family of Banu Hashim. Go on to question eight. What is the title given to the second Ashara of Ramadan? Is it A, mercy, B, forgiveness, C, protection from hellfire or D, compassion? Okay, so we have a buzz in from Osama again. Um, Osama, you have uh, only four more seconds left to change your answer if you wish to. And you have gone for? I've gone with option B, forgiveness. Forgiveness is your answer. And let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is in fact forgiveness. Well done for that. And 79% of you at home also voted for forgiveness. So well done to you at home. Um, the rest of you voted for mercy is 13% and 5% uh, went for protection from, for, from hellfire. Uh, there are three asharas or 10 days of Ramadan and our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it is Ramadan in this month in which the beginning is mercy, its middle forgiveness and its end release from the hellfire. Right, let's carry on with this program and let's go on to the next part. Uh, that was the Ramadan rush, our first round. And at the end of this round, let's see how the scores for our studio uh, contestants. We have three points for Shoaib Ali and five points for Osama Omar. How does it feel, Osama? You're in the lead now. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I wasn't expecting to get so many answers correct. So. <laughs> okay, so well done. I hope you've done a bit of revision before you come to this program. Yeah? yeah? And yourself? Yes. Read a few right. books? Well, yeah. One Noah's Ark? Noah's Ark. That's okay, right. that's going to be the next uh, part of this uh, program. So that's the score so far. Uh, so far, let's have a look and see how you have done at home. Uh, the contestants at home are as follows. So Faraz Ahmed Kamran from Germany, well done, you have eight points. Uh, Madiha in the UK has eight. Uh, uh, we have Babur uh, Abdul Hadi who also has eight points. Aisha has eight points and uh, Amwar Ali has eight points. So that's many eight points for <laughs> all, all of you uh, uh, at home. Uh, let's see if anyone can top that even further. Remember to let us know your comments. You can share those via the app or via social media handles. This now takes us to the weekly challenge. The, ch the challenge given last week was to capture the spirit of Ramadan in a single photograph. We again received a great response and we extend our heartfelt gratitude for all of you sharing your incredible entries. As we did last week, from all the submissions, we have selected just four entries that we are displaying now on your screens. It is now you, our viewers, who will get to select your favorite entry and vote for who gets to be today's winner for the weekly challenge. Simply select one, two, three or four on your apps for which entry you would like to vote for. The winner will receive a special package of MTA branded items. So guys, you can see that on your screens as well. Which, uh, which one do you prefer? Which, what do you like, um, Shoaib? Um, 
I think Hadika Nasir uh, photo looks pretty good. I mean, it, it, it reflects the uh, the month of Ramadan, uh, the decorations in the house, and you know, it it, it feels like you know it's much more. Uh, they've they've given some thought into it. And she's not related to you. No, she's not related yeah, to me. It's fine. And then I think I agree to some as well. Oh, she's definitely not related to you. I hope so. Both of you have gone for uh, Hadika. Uh, let's have a look and see how um, everyone's going to be voting at home. So remember, this is live. So we're waiting for you to respond too. So let's have a look at the poll at who is the winner of today's weekly challenge. So we can see that Saud Ahmed has got 13% of votes. Uh, Sayyida Zahida has got 48%. And we have Tahsina Nasser with 9% and Hadika Nasser 28%. So the clear winner here is Sayyida Zahida. So well done with your photograph, which is option two. And mashallah, it's a very nice photograph, which is showing a photograph of the Holy Quran and associated lights with it. Jazakumullah once again to all our viewers who sent in their submissions. It was a great image and an example of the spirit of this blessed month. Well done to everyone. And now let's learn about the new challenge, which will be to revisit our very first weekly challenge of calligraphy. But this time we want you to be basing this on the names of Allah. Send us your entries of calligraphy based on the themes of the attribute of Allah. You can do this by simply submitting through the MTA app or by tagging us on social media. We will select the top four submissions and then you, our viewers, will vote for the winner. If you haven't already downloaded the MTA app, simply scan the QR code on your screen with your phone. And remember, if you're experiencing any issues, ensure that your app is updated for the smoothest experience. Ali, I understand that you have been to Guardian with a group of uh, Tifls. How was that experience for you? Alhamdulillah, very good. It was the, my first time um, and I got an opportunity to go as part of the Atfal Lamdia UK trip to Guardian. Um, uh, Alhamdulillah, it was very faith inspiring, um, especially going to Guardian. Um, so there was 133 in total who, who went to um, um, India, um, who visited India. Out of those, um, there was about 50 Atfal, around 50 Atfal, and that was part of the group. Um, and then the feedback from all of them was amazing. Um, you know, Your ratio of adults to children was quite... Yes, because we have parents as well um, and organisers, so hence, uh, you know, there was... Uh, you didn't have a rowdy bunch of it's far that were different. No, 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 they were all very good. OK, yeah. that's good. And Sama, you went as well. And in fact, uh, tell us about what were the Atfal like? I mean, what did you see that, you know, really hit you about the nature of the Atfal, the nature of the trip? Yeah, I don't really know. The trip was, uh, was really good, well, one memorable trip, really. Um, I remember when we were uh, about to leave for Qadian from Delhi, uh, in the morning, uh, Motum Ibn Saab, uh, you know, delivered a, a sort of a small uh, speech and um, he, he did relay a message from uh, Khalifa Masih, uh, may Allah be his helper, that um, Hazur has specifically mentioned that, you know, you, now that uh, you're embarking your journey towards Qadian, you should um, uh, pay uh, more, uh, you should give more importance to prayers and while you're there especially. Um, so. It was a very long journey, um, about 14 hours it took us to get to Qadian. Uh, by, by rail or how did you go? We, we went uh, on coaches um, by road. So by the time we got to Qadian, it was already around midnight. Um, so uh, like Ali Saab also mentioned, there were a lot of Tifal, uh, tifal traveling with us as well. Uh, so it must have been quite a long journey for us. Uh, but, uh, the, uh, you know, Hearing what Hazur wanted us to do while in Qadian, uh, me and a couple of my other friends, we decided that as soon as we get to Qadian, we will uh, go to um, Masjid Mubarak and also spend some time in Baitul Dua as well. Especially at that time of the night, uh, we weren't expecting too many people to be there so we can spend some more time over there. But uh, as soon as we got to Masjid Mubarak, uh, what we saw was there were already about 15 to 20 uh, boys from our trip uh, already there, uh, uh, you know, offering Nawafil. And uh, when we went to the room uh, next to the Bet Dua, uh, again we saw about uh, you know 15 uh, boys waiting patiently for their turn to go inside Bet Dua and uh, you know uh, uh, pray over there as well. So I think that that, that was that was really amazing. That's see. quite amazing. So let's have a, a brief look at this very memorable trip uh, that took place uh, for the Atfal of the UK. <laughs> Last year. Majlis Khudamul Ahmadiyya UK arranged a historic visit for more than 30 Atfal to the blessed town of Qadian in India to learn about its place in history and the humble beginnings of Islam Ahmadiyyat. 
Jamaat Ahmadiyya India scheduled various visits to historical sites, including the Qutub Minar and Taj Mahal. After visiting Qadian, the members then also visited Hushyarpur and Ludhiana. Once back home in the UK, the group was blessed with an opportunity to have a brief meeting and a memorable photo with their beloved Imam, Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi V, may Allah be his helper. During the photo session, Hazur graciously asked the members about their experiences and some of the members shared their thoughts on the trip. Alhamdulillah, I can say that this trip has changed my life. So you guys are quite lucky. Not only did you get to go to the Merkaz Gardian, but you also got to see and meet uh, Hazuri Akhtas. Anything special that he said to you when you, uh, when you returned? That's right. Uh, we were very lucky uh, to have the time with Khalifa um, And Azur has, uh, you know, has given us so much time, um, you know, when, when we went there to have mulaqat. Um, and Hazur actually asked each and every individual, you know, how the trip was um, and, you know, what we have gained from that trip as well. So Alhamdulillah, it was, it was, we were very lucky to Mashallah, have that. Very good. So let's, with that, we go on to round two. Welcome to round two, where we'll, where we'll explore questions from the iconic book of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, Noah's Ark. Unlike round one, there are no buzzers here. Instead, both contestants will go head to head, aiming to answer each question and earn valuable points. But here's the catch. Each correct answer in this round is worth five points. This round may present a tougher challenge of memory, so each of the contestants will be given a virtual viewer's lifeline. With this lifeline, contestants, you can, as you wish, uh, the viewers at home can help to vote for and make their choice accordingly and guide those in the studios. Remember, contestants, you only have one lifeline each. If you decide to use your lifeline, the other players' answers will be locked in, giving you the opportunity to select your answer based on the consensus of our viewers at home. It's a strategic move that could make all the difference in this round. You understand what to do? Yep. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to question one then. Question one is, which surah contains a grand prophecy that there will be some Muslims who will become heirs of the past prophets and be bestowed with prophethood? Is it A, Surah Al-Baqarah, B, Surah Al-Fath, C, Surah Al-Fatiha, or D, Surah As-Sajda? So four possible answers. Remember, you will not be buzzing in. You're just going to select the answer of your choice. And we'll give you a few more seconds at home as well to make your selection. And let's have a lock-in of the possibilities. And let's, let's show what you voted for. So in the studio, we had Osama, you voted for? Uh, option C, Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha is your choice and yours? Same, option C. So both of you in the studio have gone, gone on for Surah Al-Fatiha. Let's have a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is in fact Surah Al-Fatiha, so well done to both of you. Um, let's have a look and see how you voted at home. 35% of you, unfortunately, uh, voted for Surah Al-Baqarah. So don't trust the audience, as I said in the previous episodes as well. A lifeline may, <laughs> may be too risky, but have a look and see how it goes. Um, Surah Al-Fatiha, 21%. 29% went for Surah Al-Fath. And 13% uh, went for Surah As-Sajdah. The Promised Messiah, alayhi salam, has explained that within the prayer, uh, of this surah, Sirat al ladina and Amta alayhim, one asks to be guided on the path on which Allah has, has bestowed his blessings. One of these blessings mentioned in the Quran is prophethood. Hence, this verse contains an underlying prophecy that there will be some from amongst the Muslims who will become heirs of the past prophets on account of their truth and sincerity and will be bestowed with the blessings of prophethood. Let's go on to question two. Question two is, which book did the Jews give preference to over the Torah, despite its contradictions in certain matters, as mentioned by the promised Messiah, alayhi salam? Was it A, the Holy Quran, B, the Gospel, C, the Tanakh, or D, the Talmud? Four possibilities, and let's give a few more moments to those at home who can also vote. Um, Possible answers are all in front of you. Let's have a look and see how you've done in the studio. Lock in the answers from the studio. Osama, what do you think? Uh, I've gone with uh, the Talmud. The Talmud is your uh, selection and yours? Yep, Deef. 
uh, Talmud is yours. Um, are you looking at each other's answers or? I hope not. No, no. Not, not looking over no. your shoulder. No. Really. No. So you've both gone for the Talmud. Let's see if that was the correct answer. Well done, both of you. The Talmud is the correct answer. And well done to everyone at home. Uh, the Talmud, 46% of you voted for the Talmud. Um, the others, 33% uh, got the Gospel, 11% um, the Tanakh, and 9% uh, the Holy Quran. The Talmud is the book which contains the Jewish religious law and is, uh, in certain matters, the Talmud contradicted the Torah, but the Jews would give preference to the Talmud. Let's move on to our next question. Which prophets were the Jews expecting, which prophet were the Jews expecting to physically descend from heaven before the advent of their promised Messiah? Was it A, the, uh, the prophet Joseph? Was it B, the prophet Jonah? Was it C, the prophet Elijah? Or was it the prophet Elisha? Four possibilities. Uh, remember, you can select any of those four. Your time is about to end in the studio very soon. Make your selection and let's lock in your answers. Everyone at home, remember to make your selection now. So let's have a look at the selection within the studios. Um, in the studio, we have, what did you select? Well, I went for A, Prophet Joseph. You've gone for Prophet Joseph. And your selection? I've gone with uh, option C, Prophet Elijah. Prophet uh, Elijah. So we have uh, these two selections in the studios. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. Um, the correct answer is Prophet Elijah. Well done. Mashallah, you got that right. And 77% of you at home also got that right. So well done to everyone at home who managed to get the correct answer. Uh, to learn more about this interesting fact, let's go to Abdul Halim, who's one of our resident experts here at MTA International. Here's an interesting fact. The Jews at the time of Jesus wasalam, did not accept him because they said our books prophesied the second coming of Elijah and that he will physically descend from the heavens. In the same way, the Muslims today do not believe in the promised Messiah because they also say that Jesus will physically descend from the heavens. But Jesus during the time of the Jews said that the second coming of Elijah is John the Baptist in his spirit and his likeness. In the same way, the promised Messiah has said that I am Jesus, son of Mary, in his spirit and in his likeness. Now, here's a simple question. If it was the practice of God Almighty to physically send back past prophets, then why did the prophet Elijah not return? Welcome back to the studios. And remember, there's a lifeline here. So if you wish, you may actually ask the audience. They're doing a bit better now in terms of their own uh, scoring. So uh, you can have some confidence in what's going on uh, at home on the apps. So if you'd like to get their guidance, uh, tell me and then we'll actually lock your answers in. Let's go on to question four. Question four is, who served as the judge during the attempted murder case against the promised Messiah, alayhi salam? There are four possibilities. Uh, number one, A is Pilate. Uh, B is Alexandra Dowie, C is Captain Douglas, or D is Martin Clark. Would you like a lifeline? I'm okay. I think I'm pretty You're confident okay about this. this. Yep. Summer? Yeah, no. I'm... You're okay for this one? Okay, so both of you have made your selection, and let's see what that selection is. The selection that you have chosen is Captain Douglas, am I right to say? That's correct. right, yep. Okay, let's have a look and see uh, whether that is correct. And... Yes, Captain Douglas is the correct answer. 45% of you at home have also voted for Captain Douglas. So well done on that. Um, the other possibilities were Martin Clark, Alexandra Dowie and Pilot. And 36% of you unfortunately got Martin Clark, which was close. But Henry Martin Clark was in fact the person who claimed that the uh, promised Messiah, alayhi salam, had sent a man to murder him. And the judge at that time was Captain Douglas. Let's move on to question five. Which Muslim cleric testified against the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, in the attempted murder case? Was it A, Abdullah Atham, B, Muhammad Hussein Batalvi, was it C, Lekram, or was it D, Fazl Shah? Four possibilities. A few more seconds to you, for you to actually change your mind if you wish to. And we will now lock in the answer so that everyone at home can also finalize their um, selection. 
In the studios, Shweb Ali, what have you gone for? Um, B, Mohammed Hussain. You've gone Batalvi. for Mohammed Hussain Batalvi and... Same. Same, Mohammed Hussain Batalvi. Let's see what the correct answer is. Correct answer is Mohammed Hussain Batalvi. And 59% of you at home also um, did actually vote for Mohammed Hussain Batalvi. Mohammed Hussain Batalvi at one stage of his life praised the promised Messiah alayhi salam for his services to Islam, uh, but later on became an enemy when the promised Messiah made his claim. Let's go on to the next question. And this is question six. According to the promised Messiah alayhi salam, which three prophets appeared before Jesus and were considered greater than him in terms of miracles? You have four possibilities. Was it A, Moses, Elisha, and Elijah? Was it B, Adam, Noah, and Jonah? Was it C, Noah, Abraham, and Isaac? Or was it D, Moses, David, and Sol Solomon? So you have those possibilities. You look a bit confused. Do you want a lifeline? Yes, I would. Okay, I would so Sama Sab's going to go for a lifeline. Please, at home, remember you are meant to help him get the right answer. Let's have a look and see um, what this is going to reveal. So those at home, um, we will we'll, uh, ask you what your answers are. Let's lock in the answer for um, Sh uh, Shoaib, who's already answered with his uh, selection in the studio. And let's lock in home answers as well. And let's see how everyone has voted. So the votes at home show us that 17% of you think it's Moses, Elisha, and Elijah. 31% think it's Noah, Abraham, and Isaac. 16% think it's Adam, Noah, and Jonah. And 34% think it's Moses, David, and Solomon. So where does that take you? It's very close between C and D. So C and D are very close. You've got 31 and 34%. But what are you going to select based on that? Um, I would go with the majority. So you're going to go with the majority. So the majority you're going to go with is uh, David, Moses, and Solomon. Yeah. OK, so your selection is David, Moses, and Solomon. Your selection? A. A, Thank which you. is a very firm A, Moses, Elisha, and Elijah. Um, Osama, lock your answer in, please. And let's have a look and see how you have both uh, uh, selected. So we've got A for Shoaib and uh, Osama has got D. Um, let's see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is A, which is Moses, Elisha and Elijah. So well done. Uh, sorry, Osama, the um, audience wasn't very kind to you today. But uh, let's carry on and move on. To learn more about this, let's go to Kamar Zafar, who's one of our resident experts. Now, we already know that Allah supports his prophets with manifest signs and miracles, and Prophet Moses السلام, was no different. Pharaoh demanded a sign for him to show that he was truly from God. Moses السلام, was commanded to throw his rod in front of a huge audience, including Pharaoh. And through this, in a vision, all of the people witnessed that that very rod turned into a serpent. This was testimony to Pharaoh and his people that he really was supported by Allah the Almighty. That was Prophet Moses alayhi salam. We also hear of Prophet Elijah alayhi salam who appeared in around 900 BC. What was so important about him? We know that it is written in the Bible that he used to revive the dead, similar to Jesus alayhi salam. However, the promised Messiah alayhi salam, has mentioned that according to the Bible, Prophet Elijah alayhi salam, actually revived more people to life than Jesus alayhi salam, did. And we know, obviously, that this means a spiritual revival. So let's go on to question seven. And question seven is, according to the promised Messiah alayhi salam, which hadith book clearly states that Jesus alayhi salam, has passed away? Is it A, Sahih Muslim, B, Sunan Abu Dawud, C, uh, Sahih Bukhari, or D, Jamia Tirmizi. Uh, four possibilities, Sahih Muslim, Abu Dawud, Bukhari, or Tirmizi. What is going to be your selection here in the studio? Can I use Lifeline? Let's lock it in and um, then give you a moment to Can I us. use Lifeline? Oh, we already, we've got a Lifeline here. After what happened, Reese, just now. Okay, okay well, so let's, <laughs> let's have let's a look see. and see. <laughs> let's have a look and see uh, how this Lifeline will help you. And um, Osama, we just need you to press so that you can actually lock in your answer. Yes. Um, so let's have a look and see how the lifelines uh, will guide you. We have um, scores from home. We have 65% of you who have voted for Sahih Bukhari. 
we have 10% of you who have gone for Tirmidhi, we have got 10% who have gone for Abu Daud, and 13% for you of you who have gone for uh, Muslim. Clear majority have gone for Bukhari. Will you follow them? Yep, I will go. So you go for Bukhari. Let's have a look and see um, uh, what the correct answer is. And Osama, what did you go for, by the way? Uh, same, same. Same Bukhari. So uh, unanimously, that both the uh, studios, uh, contestants, and at home have said Sahih Bukhari. Let's have a look at the correct answer. It is Sahih Bukhari. So well done to that 70%. So well done, audience. Carry on, keep moving, let's go on to question seven. There are many proofs within Ahadith that the Holy Quran which prove that Jesus has indeed passed away. Sahih Bukhari is just one of them and is stated by the promised Messiah alayhi salam. Uh, let's go on to question eight. Uh, this uh, you need to fill in the blanks for. It, this is from the very book Noah's Ark and it, it says, do not behave like blank who are attracted to the depths of darkness, rather become soaring blank who are drawn to the sky. Are those blanks A, worms and birds, B, ants and parrots, C, snakes and eagles, or D, rats and pigeons? Uh, what is going to be your selection? It's gonna be an interesting one because I don't think it's an easy uh, question. Um, in the studios, um, let's have a look and lock in your responses. Uh, Shweb Ali, what have you gone for? Went for D. Rats and pigeons. What what made you think rats and pigeons? Um, I, th I think I, th I I remember reading about pigeons and rats, so that's why I went for rats and pigeons in in the book. No, Summer, I've gone with the same option as well. And did you actually read the book? And just, is it yes, that uh, it kind of recalls that I've read rats and pigeons somewhere. Okay, that's fine. All right, so both of you gone with rats and pigeons. Uh, let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. Well done, both of you. So both of you gone for rats and pigeons. Many of you at home need to read the book because you've got it completely wrong. You have got worms and birds. 50% uh, of you thought it was words, uh, worms and birds. Um, the rest, ants and parrots were 5%, 27% snakes and eagles, and 16% rats and pigeons. The Promised Messiah, alayhi salam, writes, do not behave like rats who are attracted to the depths of darkness, rather become soaring pigeons who are drawn to the sky. Do not make a pledge of repentance whilst remaining adamant on sin. Be mindful of death, for it lurks nearby, though you may be unmindful of it. So let's uh, carry on with the program, and uh, that's the end of round two. Let's have a look at the scores in the studios. We have 38 points with uh, Shoaib Ali, and uh, Osama Omar uh, has 40 points. Mashallah, well done, you're two points ahead. Is it your mother's prayers that are helping you? Uh, I, I believe so. <laughs> and your mother-in-law's prayers? <laughs> well, yes, not working, so <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. And let's have a look at the leaderboard uh, for your scores at home. At home, we have the following. We have Abdul Rauf, who is uh, joining us from Ghana. Well done, 42 points there. Sakina is on 42 points, again from uh, Ghana. We have Zahida, who is joining us from the UK with 42 points. Canada, North America have joined us, well done. Wakey, wakey, Tawheed Sub, well done. It's 41 points for you. And Faraz Ahmed Kamran, 38 points from Germany. So well done, a truly international program. We hope more of you will be tuning in and uh, pressing your buzzers in time. So. While the leaderboard stands show uh, equal uh, with regards to answers, remember this is, game of, this is a game of speed. The quickest responses consistently uh, place contestors, contestants at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, with one round remaining, there's still time to join in live to this interactive quiz. Simply scan the QR code on the screen and download the official MTA app and join into quiz time. A quick reminder, if you're watching on YouTube, there is a significant delay compared to the official app. For the best chance to win, watch via the official MTA app. Now we're just over halfway through the quiz. Both contestants have been playing very well here in the studio and have been showing good sportsmanship and skill all at the same time while they're fasting. Uh, this, uh, there is more to come as we find out which contestant here and which contestant at home will take away today's win. Now we head to the last round of the quiz, round three, the Khalifa's voice. And in this round, our questions are based on the enlightening Friday sermons delivered by our beloved Imam. Let's dive in. 
The buzzers are back and we're sticking to the same format as round one. You'll buzz in to answer and then have 10 seconds to lock in your response. In this round, we're exploring topics mentioned by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasrah al-Aziz in his Friday sermon. Each correct answer will give you two points. So if you're trailing behind, now's your opportunity to make a comeback. Let's get started. We'll go with question one. What condition must one fulfill to ensure that Allah hears their prayers? Is it A, offer regular charity? B, performing pilgrimage to Mecca? Is it C, establishing true, true righteousness? Or D, reciting specific... Okay, so we have a buzz in already from the studios. We won't reveal uh, option D until the end. And uh, let's give you a few more seconds. Uh, the buzz in was from Osama. Osama, what did you select? I've gone with the option C, establishing true righteousness. Establishing true righteousness uh, was your selection. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. And the reveal shows that establishing true righteousness uh, was uh, the correct answer. And option D was reciting specific prayers at dawn. The poll shows that 92% of you, well done, very good to you, all of you at home, um, have also selected establishing true righteousness. And this was covered in yesterday's wonderful Friday sermon by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen. And as we are in the month of Ramadan, the main reason for us uh, to fast is that we may attain righteousness and closeness to Allah the Almighty. Let's go on to question two. Which action did Hazur Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz mention is, is essential for increasing in one's faith? Is it A, fasting regularly, B, reading the Holy Quran, C, persisting in offering prayers, uh, or... Okay, so we have a buzz in here. Uh, this buzz in is by Shweb Ali. Um, Shweb Ali, your answer may be changed in two seconds, but your time is up. What's your selection? Uh, C, persisting in offering prayers. Persisting in offering prayers. So that's your selection. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is, in fact, well done. Uh, option C. And uh, D was performing charitable deeds. Only 1% of you would uh, have gone for that. 82% of you at home also went for persisting in offering prayers. So well done. The correct answer is, in fact, uh, as I mentioned, persisting in offering your daily prayers, which is the key to increasing your faith. Uh, we are now going to proceed on to the last few questions, but let's take a moment to reflect on the enlightening and uplifting Friday sermon delivered by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen yesterday. The sermon reminded us of the crucial steps one must take to establish a genuine relationship with Allah the Almighty and open the doors for the acceptance of prayers. Hazrat emphasized the ever-present nature of Allah for his servants and underscored that the purification of our characters and hearts along with constant turning to God are essential for the acceptance of our prayers. As an example to illustrate this, Rafiq friend from Philadelphia in the United States shared an inspirational incident on the acceptance of prayers. Let's take a look. <laughs> Let me share with you something that happened to me of one of the many, many incidences where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown up in amazing speed almost, in amazing speed. So my wife and I, we're having our second child and we went up a hill. It was a very snowy, icy night. And we went up this really steep hill, it was really steep. And we got to the top and the light changed I, and I had bad tires on this car. And it's like, oh my gosh. And we're like almost on a 90 degree incline. And it's a long way back down. So um, we're sitting there at the light and the light changes. And I try to take off and the wheels just spin. And I kind of slide back a little bit. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I put on the brakes and I actually put the car in park. And I'm sitting there saying, what to do, what to do. And I started praying. Ya Allah, help me, please. You know, I start making the rule Sharif, you know. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin, right? And I'm sitting there like and praying. All of a sudden, a truck comes from behind us, pickup truck, pulls up in front, backs up to us, guy jumps out, starts pulling chains out of his car. You know, it's like, what, who's that? Put the chains underneath the car, hooked it up, pulled the car onto level ground, took the chains off, threw them back in the truck and said, I said, sir, can I? He said, no need, you okay? Got in the truck and took off. Two story, it happened. Praying, but I got a good relationship. Relationship pays off. 
at critical moments. And that was one of them. If you say your, your mom or your dad is, is, is telling you to do things, yeah, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna do this, you know. And then, then you go to them and say, uh, can I have, uh, you know, I need some monies or whatever. It's like, well, you, didn't, you didn't do nothing. I told you to take out the trash, I told you this, I told you to make your bed, I told you to wash the clothes. You didn't do nothing. What do you deserve anything for? It's the same thing with the creator. The more you do what the creator's telling you to do, the more, the better they're going, the results. It's just as simple, as simple as that. So welcome back to the studios and you were just watching an inspirational story of Rafiq, a friend from Philadelphia, a testament to Hazul's statement from yesterday's Friday sermon that examples of Allah's profound connection with his creation are evident to all those who submit to his will. Osama, um, we were talking earlier about a book club that you have uh, with the Athfal in your local area. Tell us a bit more about that. Yes, yeah, so it's, um, I, I serve as a secretary shot for my local Jamaat Amla and also in Khudam Amla as well. So one of the initiatives that we introduced about two years ago was to hold a book club um, where we invite members of the Jamaat, uh, not only Itfal, but you know, Khudam and Ansar as well. Uh, and uh, we read portions of, uh, of selected book of Prophet Messiah or a Jamaat book. And then we uh, hold discussions uh, on what we have read uh, on the day as well. So um, we had very good, uh, successful turnout on those book clubs. Which books have you gone through so far? So one of them was actually Noah's Ark okay. last year. Most and we, we, we finished it as well. And I believe uh, those book clubs have uh, helped me, you know, in, in the round two today as so well. So you're leading by example. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Yeah. And um, the, the, many people are quite lazy nowadays. They like to just scroll through YouTube or do this or do that. Um, the Jamaat has uh, many of these books in different formats. Were you able to also uh, allow people to actually engage in that book club, maybe through listening to an audio book? Yeah, so what we did was um, we also sent out a, a Zoom link uh, before uh, the book club was about to happen. So people can also join in virtually as well. And um, uh, there was also an option to uh, uh, read books online uh, on Al Islam while we were, uh, you know, uh, doing the book club as well. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, the, we had a successful turnout virtually and uh, in person as well. Okay, mashallah, very good. Let's hope and pray that it carries on to be a success for you locally. Um, let's carry on with uh, round three and question three. Uh, during the period of ignorance before Islam, what was the name of Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu before it was changed by the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Was it A, Abdul Uzza, B, Abdul Kaaba, C, Abdul Mana? Okay, so Osama, you've buzzed in and you need to, we need to lock his answer and uh, give him a few more seconds. Two, one, zero. Your selection was? Uh, option B, Abdul Kaaba. Abdul Kaaba. Um, let's have a look and see uh, what the correct answer was. Well done. The correct answer was, in fact, uh, Abdul Kaaba. Abdul, D, uh, the Abdul Lat was the uh, possibility for, for option D. 61% of you at home, so well done. Everyone at home uh, had also voted for Abdul Kaaba, so well done. Let's go to the next question. In uh, question four we have, in which trades did Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu engage, uh, uh, ultimately resulting in his outstanding success as a trader? Was it A, uh, spices, B, precious stones, C, clothes, or D, livestock? So, sure, so we have uh, a buzz in from Osama. Osama's buzzed in. Uh, we will give you a few more seconds at home to also uh, select your answers. Your selection is? I'm going with clothes. You're going to go with clothes. So your selection is clothes. The correct answer is? C, well done. Clothes is the correct answer. And 56% of you, well done at home. Again, well done. 56% of you have also opted for clothes. Let's go on to the next question. Next question is? What was one of the reasons behind naming the pact Hilful Fudul? Hilful Fudul. What was one of the reasons behind naming the pact Hilful Fudul? Was it A, it was signed during the month of Fudul? 
Uh, it was B. Uh, it was established by people with the word Fadl in their names. So we have a buzz in. We will only show you those two possibilities because Shuaib Ali has uh, made his selection. Three, two, one. Let's uh, have a listen to what you have selected. Uh, B. It was, B. Established, it was established by people with the word Fadl in their names. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. And yes, fifth, uh, that is the uh, correct answer. Well done. Um, and option C was it was named after the valley uh, where the pact was made. And D was that it was named after a king. Uh, the uh, audience has also, mashallah, voted uh, very well, which was 53% of you um, got it right by saying that the uh, word Fadl is from the people uh, whose name, who had that in their names. And Hilfir Fadul was a pact made before prophethood in Mecca, and its objective was to maintain peace, suppressing violence, injustice, and upholding the rights of the weak and poor. How's the program for you guys now? Good. I think uh, everyone at home is feeling more comfortable and answering correctly as well, and um, uh, our time is, is, is about to end uh, soon. But uh, you're in the flow of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a setting. Okay, mashallah, yeah. well done. Right, scoreboards. Let's have a look and see how you guys have done in the studios. We have 42 points uh, with Shuaib Ali and Osama Omar Wadan. You have 46 points here in the studios. Well done to both of you. Um, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, I think we've still got some questions. Is it? Okay, you're hoping for many more, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, that's the end. Okay. <laughs> let's have a look at the leaderboard for all of you at home. Let's have a look and see how you have scored. So let's get it up. We have the lead with Zahida Sabahat with 52 points, mashallah, in the UK. We have Africa coming second, uh, two of you, Abdul Rauf, uh, Ghana, and Sakina Ahmed, 50 points again. We have uh, Tawheed uh, in, the, uh, in Canada, in North America, and Jibrail, who looks like South Africa. So, mashallah, well done, a very good African uh, presence. Uh, but it is Zahida Sabahat, who is in the United Kingdom, who is the ultimate winner of today's program with 52 points, mashallah. And well done to all of you who have been participating from every corner of the world to make this a uh, true success. Um, we will continue with another program, which will be the last program next week. Uh, let's now took, uh, uh, take a look at um, what will be coming next week. Uh, congratulations to both of you once again. And, and heartfelt congratulations to all of those who are at home and spread the word to your family and friends and make sure that they do join us as well. Uh, we need more people from North America, from South America, from Far East Asia to also submit their uh, entries and join and be part of this show. Remember to take part in the weekly challenge and you've already been told that it's calligraphy on the attributes of Allah, which is the theme for next week. So get those submissions in. We hope that you enjoy this enriching experience uh, where you, our contestants, have joined us with the uh, contestants here in the studios and have uh, participated in this brilliant show to enhance your knowledge. Before we bid you farewell, let's remember Hazrat Khalifatul Masih, the fifth guidance for prayers in this blessed month. Let's all strive to work hard to improve our own personal levels of righteousness and establish a true and meaningful connection with Allah the Almighty, as Hazul guided us in his Friday sermon yesterday. From all of us in the studios here in London, until the next final episode next week, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.